They are also biological molecules, just like everything else we've been looking at. They are hydrophobic, unlike the monosaccharides and disaccharides that we saw yesterday, but similar to the polysaccharides that we saw yesterday. Hydrophobic means insoluble in water. What's the opposite of hydrophobic? Hydrophobic. Nice. Lipids contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Those are the elements that are involved in lipids, which is what we saw with carbohydrates as well. There are three main types of lipids, at least the ones that IB Chem needs you to know about. They are triglycerides, phospholipids, and steroids. IB wants to make sure that you know the importance of lipids, but also some of the negative factors that are associated with lipids. We're going to start with the positives. It's good energy storage for us. There's more energy than there are in carbohydrates, but it's less easily available. So it, it takes more to get that energy out, but it gets stored for longer and can get used over a longer period of time. It's not that flash of energy. Some hormones are formed from stereolipids, steroid lipids, excuse me. There are some structural components associated with lipids as well. And they help our bodies to absorb the nonpolar vitamins that are critical for our body. And tomorrow we'll talk about in section B5 uh, micro and macronutrients, which are what vitamins fall under. Some of the negative functions or aspects associated with lipids, an excess in it leads to de deposition in the blood vessels, atherosclerosis, and you'll read in the book about some of the negative effects with that, but in general that can tend to lead towards obesity, which can also then lead to diabetes and cancer. Um, what does it means that it, it doesn't just stay within the blood, it goes along the cell walls or the blood cell vessel walls and just stays there. Thank you for clarifying. Okay, now back to those three main types of lipids, starting with triglycerides. Those are fats and oils. They are esters that are formed by the condensation, so removing water again, reaction between glycerol and three fatty acids, which are long chain carboxylic acids. The lengths of the fatty acids and the number and position of double bonds within those fatty acids give the triglycerides the different properties that they have, like the melting point, which is why butter at room temperature tends to be pretty solidified still, but vegetable oil is going to be a liquid at room temperature.
you can see in the next picture, still a few pence, I'm leaving this up for right now. You can see in the next picture, though, that's in your note guide, where the OH and the H for water come from in that condensation reaction. What's another word for condensation reaction? Dehydration. Good. Okay. So we can see this dehydration, which is a condensation, removing waters with each of those bonds that we form. And there's my esters, the COC, if you don't remember, is an ester. Okay. Determining the degree of unsaturation. We know that saturated, and we learned this in organic chemistry, means that there's no double bonds. So an alkane is saturated. All of the spots that could have a hydrogen is filled with a hydrogen. No double bonds. And we have unsaturated. That contains one double bond. And then if we have more than that, we get polyunsaturated. We've got multiple double bonds. Thinking back to organic chemistry, if we had a solution and we're trying to figure out if this organic solution contains double bonds or not, what did we add to it? Bromine water, absolutely. Do you guys remember what type of reaction that is? Addition, very nice. So we can do the similar thing here to determine how many double bonds there are. We do an iodine addition reaction. Then we would titrate to figure out how much iodine was actually reacted. So it'd break those double bonds, be an addition reaction. All of the double bonds would now have an iodine on each of the carbons that was attached to the double bond. And then we would titrate and see just how much iodine was left in the solution. Okay, the iodine number is then calculated. Since I have my data, I can calculate the iodine number. And it's how many iodine molecules reacted and therefore how many double bonds there were in the molecule. So let's say that we have a sample of fat that contains 0.05 moles of fatty acid and that it reacts with 50.0 grams of iodine. We want to know how many double bonds were present. That iodine there, that's an I2. So we're thinking of I2, not just one iodine. We're thinking of I2, which is why the molar mass, that's the big M there, the molar mass of the I2 is 254, not half of that. Oops. So my givens, I know my moles of my fat, my fatty acid, my lipid. I know my mass of iodine that reacted, and I know my molar mass of iodine. So if I take my mass that reacted and divide that by the molar mass, so 50.80 grams divided by 254 grams per mole, I'm going to get moles of iodine. So I get 0 0.2 moles of iodine that reacted with that 0 0.05 moles of the fatty acid. So that means every one mole of iodine, there were four moles of fatty acid that reacted. So four bonds that reacted with the iodine. And I just looked at the ratio between the 0.2 and the 0 0.05. There's four of those in that number. That's where I get that 4 to 1 ratio. And the only part that's reacting are the double bonds, so I know that there are four double bonds.
one more topic before we get to the other two types of uh, main types of lipids that involves digestion. So since those lipids are all insoluble, they have to be broken down. The way that they're broken down is through a hydrolysis reaction, which gives fatty acids and glycerol. Ooh, I don't know why that went forward. Go back. There we go. And the enzyme lipase that is in our bodies is what aids in that digestion reaction. Enzymes act as what in a reaction? Catalyst. Catalyst, absolutely good. What does a catalyst or an enzyme, in this case specifically with biology, do to the activation energy? Where is it? Good. That looks like all the pens. So, phospholipids are one of our other main types. They're also derived from fatty acids and glycerol, but they only have two fatty acids rather than the three that we saw in the last one. It also is going to have a phosphate group. So the third OH of the glycerol condenses with a phosphate group. So phospholipids have a polar head. Where this isn't going. Here we go. So we've got a part of it that is definitely polar. Phospholipids provide the basis for cell membranes. We have the polar side all together and the nonpolar sides all together. And that's the cell membrane. And you've got an image of it in your notes. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mark schemes to see if it shows up. So far it hasn't. Okay. Our last of the three most common lipids are steroids. Come on. I don't even know where this is gone. There we go. There's the image. I still don't know where my cursor is. Oh, spinning rainbow of doom. At least now we know. Spinning rainbow of doom. 